Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherill and I am a fourth generation witch. I wish to look today at the correlation and the mystical connection between the lunar phases, the moon, and your witchcraft. So I'm going to delve in depth into how the lunar phases would affect your witchcraft and what spells and rituals you will do throughout the phases of the moon. And how, with that said, we need to know what those phases of the moon are. So let's look at them. There are eight primary phases and they all start with the wonderful new moon, which is when the moon is dark for three days. We then move on to the waxing crescent. We have the first quarter, the waxing gibbous, the full moon, the waning gibbous, the last quarter, and the final waning crescent. So each of these phases has their own unique energy associated with it, so, and each lunar phase has its own specific types of magic, such as release, manifestation and growth. So we're going to look at these in a bit more detail. So we'll start, of course, with the new moon. There are several different ways that you can work with the new moon. Traditional magical witchcraft associates the new moon energy with new beginnings. So this is a time for planning and preparation for the year ahead. And each new moon, astrologers believe, has some of the elements of the sign, the zodiac sign, that it is associated with. So the new moon in June 2023 is associated with the zodiac sign Gemini. This new moon's energy is for communication issues. So should you want to develop a relationship better, but you're finding it difficult to, you know, really get to know that person, this is the time to set your rituals and spells using that new moon growth in order to advance that particular project. The new moon is one of my favourite times of the lunar phase because it's quiet and contemplative and is looking forward to the future. It is very much part of that forward planning and I do love a bit of planning. It appeals to my Capricornian nature. Rituals that you would use during a waxing phase of a moon would be those for attraction and growth. So if you want to do money spells, for example, or attract love to yourself, or grow in your business, or things such as that nature, you would cast your rituals and spells during this phase of the moon. Of course, the waxing moon creates a full moon, and this is when the moon is at its height of energy. Full moons are a brilliant time with which to do divination spells, charging your tools, using the moon's powerful energy to charge moon water, and to help you with your heightened awareness of your third eye. The full moon has all the attractions of its zodiacal sign involved in it. And so therefore you can use those energies as well in associating the rituals and magic that you're going to do. And finally, we come to the waning phase of the moon. And this is the perfect time to do release spells. So if you wish to cord cut, this is the time to use that phase of the moon to really push that energy into your rituals. So how might you consider working with lunar energy? Well, one of the best ways to do this is to make moon water. Now you can make moon water at any stage throughout the lunar phase, and each part of that lunar phase will imbibe its individual energy into that moon water. So if you're looking for an attraction and growth spell in relationships, work, money, whatever, you can use moon water made under a waxing moon or a full moon, full moon's good for everything. Moon water made underneath a waxing moon will have increasing growth energy, and moon water made under a waning moon will have releasing energy. So it's very good to use moon water that's been made at different times of the lunar cycle in each of your spells. You can also use the moon to charge your crafts and tools. Now, I always charge my crystal ball underneath the light of a full moon because it really helps imbue it with its energy and 
divination. Actually, this is a brand new crystal ball, and I'm going to do a video on it about what I found out when I got it. I mean, it's not brand new, it's actually a second-hand crystal ball, but I want to tell you how I've got on with this. So I'll make a video of that in a couple of weeks' time. It is utterly fascinating. Additionally, you can incorporate lunar symbols into your spells and rituals or onto an altar, for example. Now, I often incorporate this particular wonderful lunar globe witch's ball, which works very well, when I want to use full moon energy in a ritual or a spell. You can use um, signs or symbols of a waning moon, a waxing moon, a new moon, whatever energy that you're trying to attract into that ritual and it's a great way to easily bring in lunar energy to your craft. How else might you incorporate moon magic into your rituals? Well you would do a moon altar is always good. You can set your altar for whatever intention that you have. Say it's to bring uh, health benefits to your life. You would put on your altar um, objects that would bring in better health to you and release the negative health that you have. And so I would tend to do a health altar under a waning moon to release the bad health from your system. moon rituals tend to be all about gratitude and it's a chance to look back isn't it and just see how marvellous the world is and so that is what I like to do. Witches often in their covens would perform their rituals on full moon nights. That's because the moon's power is at its height and if you want quick results I would use a full moon magical night for those rituals because it will help. I love incorporating moon magic into my practice on a regular basis. For example, I do use moon magic when I'm planting my seeds. It is well known that you should plant your seedlings under a waxing moon because this is a period of growth. I will plant my flowers and seeds under a waxing moon. Actually, that's not completely true for me because I tend to have a plant habit. And so I buy lots of plants and then I just plant them when I can. So it could be any time of the month because I can kill plants with just a glance. Let's not, you know, there's no two ways about it. I've got black fingers. I love gardening, rubbish at it. What do you think about moon phases? Do you use the moon in your practice? Will you let me know in the comments below because I really enjoy reading them. The Patreon Coven meeting is coming up. It is an absolute blast. I think I can pretty much guarantee that everybody recommends it. And so do go to patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherill and have a look. Otherwise, please don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps my channel and keeps me going, means I can make these videos for you. I will see you in the next few days. <laughs>